I'm Don. Welcome to Church of Making Your Day. And coming is my beautiful wife. She's a black belt. Look at that big black belt. Hey, you don't mess with her. Trust me, I don't. Okay, we're getting into uh, Joshua uh, 15. Let's open up in prayer. Father in heaven, again, we come before you so thankful that we're able to read your word and share your word with others in a free country, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. Lord God, we're under attack. We're under attack from within. What's that old saying? Hark, we found the enemy. The enemy is us. U.S. Lord God, fix us, straighten us out. Forgive those who ask for forgiveness. Punish those who are rebellious, Lord God. Bring back your country, Lord God, and get rid of the evil. It's all you've done for thousands of years with Israel. We ask you to continue Bless the righteous, curse the wicked, because that's all you do. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to read your word. We ask right now that you'd open up the minds of our viewing audience, Lord God. Give them your Holy Spirit. And we just ask more and more for your spirit to increase. We know you're a gentleman. You won't do anything unless we ask, unless we desire. Give us a heart that desires your Holy Spirit, your ways, your freedom, your peace, your joy. Other than that, Lord God, everything is vanity. Everything is futile. So wake us up, Lord God. Now we ask you, to heal the sick. And if any of you out there has somebody sick, what do you do? You know, if you're well, you rejoice, right? James 5, anyone who is sick among you, get the anointing oil, the oil of our people, the olive oil. Jesus Christ on his last night was where? The Mount of Olives, praying. That's where they captured him. So we thank you, Lord God, for everything. And open our minds right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we continue with book Joshua, um, chapter 15 and 16. We're going to cover two chapters today. But um, more precisely, we're going to stop in chapter 15. And um, there is a reason for that. Um, if you ever pay attention to the, any legal documents of uh, real estate that you have or you you, you inherit from your parents, or if you saw any legal documents of real estate, that you notice that the address of the property is not the legal description of the real estate. The legal description is much more detailed. Why? Because if there's any dispute between you and the neighbor, between you and anybody else, maybe there's a government is a mandatory property, etc. It has to be so precise that if the dispute came to play, that both sides knows where the truth is. Right. So it's interesting because this chapter 15 is probably the chapter that give legal description of the dispute that's going on right now between Israel and um, opposite side. Apparently, there's a many of them, right? So you want to just mention one <laughs> All side. Kinds. There's a many of them. Now, the interest. So we're going to read today precisely chapter 15 from the verse number one to the verse uh, to the very last verse, which is number uh, 63. And the reason why we want to do this, even though it's not an easy reading and maybe not an easy listening, but we want for it to understand how precise Lord is, how precise our God is, 
and why he took his time to give this incredible uh, description that you cannot question him. You, we will find the name of Gaza in this description. We will find the name of Jerusalem in this description. And as it was written over 3,000 3, years ago, it should not bring any questions about the situation that we're facing right now on the Middle East. Now, if you're going to look in Islamic world, right, the, the word in Quran was written 600 years after even New Testament was written. So, the difference between something written 1,200 years or 1,000 almost 400 years prior Christ even being born right. with comparison something written 600 years after even New Testament was written is a huge difference. Now it's interesting about Lord that as you learn probably as we read in chapter by chapter and verse by verse Bible that he's not changing his mind. He is not changing his plan. It's probably almost impossible to change your plan when you know the outcomes are and God knows everything. There's a lot of people that had the near-to-death near experience and they went to be close to God. Uh, they said that suddenly their mind, their, the, the memories is so clear. They remember everything 100% like it happened yesterday. Everything that happened to them in life. Total recall. Totally recall. So this would happen in the spiritual world. Yes, we're not going to have our physical brain with us. But the memory itself that basically in the spirit, in our soul that we have, going to stay with us. And we will have 100% knowledge, understanding and memory of anything and everything that ever happened to us. So if Lord knows as his spirit is not physical person, as he knows what is going to be in the future and how things gonna work out, why he would ever change his plans. Right. His plans are written and the outcome are expected. So if you're going to cook certain meal and you want outcome to be a certain way, would you kind of change your ingredients? No. You will not, right? You're going to put exactly what precisely going to give you that result that you expected. Why? Because you like that taste. You like that outcome. You like the feeling that you get of results of that particular dish. And it's interesting because... Hey, if it works... Don't fix it. Right. right? And it's interesting because, uh, like from cooking experience, as you know, that if you mm -hmm. cook certain dish certain way, you will say, hmm, interesting, right? This time I did this and I did like that. So the next time I will make sure I will do this way. Because you want that outcome to be precisely because that uh, uh, um, the taste of the food maybe were admired by your uh, guests or m m maybe admired by your relatives and you will say well this is the way I'm gonna continue do my way right. but remember we are just humans right we have our experiences we have our uh, things that we learn and we trying to do better and try not to repeat our mistakes well God is not us his thoughts are higher th than our thoughts his ways are higher than our ways, and he clearly said this in the Bible. So, when he gives description, this is it. When we're going to read description today, and you will hear what precise description this truly is, you will understand that this is not something that he's going to change in the future. Why he would change this in the future? He's going to talk about Jerusalem, where the final Jerusalem is going to be arrived. Right. And he's going to talk Jesus. about this precise location. He will talk about Gaza. He will talk about every single detail where the border is going to be. Now, it's interesting that this chapter, which involves Gaza, which involves Jerusalem, this is chapter of location of the tribe Judah. 
Judah is the lineage of the Christ. So we will not read a total description just like this for every tribe. So we have 12 tribes, with exception of Levites, they didn't have their own location, as you remember, we mentioned this last time. However, we're only going to read this for Judah, just because how important this is, how argumentative that is, and um, the Prime Minister of Israel brought this to the world, he even shown a map, for the world to understand, because people don't understand who create the borders of Israel, who involve Jerusalem as a part of, um, of the, um, uh, Israel, and as a Donald Trump in 2017 acknowledged, the first president ever acknowledged Jerusalem to be capital of um, It went from Israel. Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Yeah, if you remember, Tel Aviv was forever, right? right. We remember through our life, I was a little kid, remember, if it's Israel, it's Tel Aviv. Right. Israel is never Jerusalem. Right. Israel is a Tel Aviv. Right. So the things has changed as we're going to read about it the went from, tribe of Judah. It went from mankind to God, right? Tel Aviv represents what? Mankind. What does Jerusalem represent? God. God's city, the new Jerusalem, coming soon. On earth forever, right? You ain't going to get raptured. That's Satan's theory. I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to rapture you up. That's the Antichrist. Don't go. There's these preachers that go. There'll be one. We've all heard these verses, right? There'll be one in the, uh, two in the bed. One will be taken, the other left. There'll be two in the uh, mill grinding uh, flour, right? One will be taken, the other left. There'll be two in the field. One will be taken, the other left. What do these preachers say? I want to be that first one taken. No, you don't. You'd be taken by the Antichrist. 666 comes before 777. You wait for the real Christ, okay? You don't run with the Antichrist like all these raptured people are going to do. So you got to wake up. Your kingdom come, you will be done. Where? On earth. earth as it is in heaven. No, we're not going up. The, that dimension of, of spiritual dimension. We're going to be caught up. We're not going up. We're going to be caught up in the spirit as the second Jesus Christ. You know, here, here's something you can tell people who are, getting, who are all hooked on the um, rapture, pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, whatever their idiot thinking is, right? Mm. When you think that, because G, um, Satan is awesome being. He didn't get up there guarding God's a seat of grace, the throne of grace, for nothing. He earned it. He was awesome. He was beautiful. He was the best. He was the full package. He still lives to deceive you, right? If you can pinch yourself when the Messiah comes, if you can pinch yourself and it hurts, that ain't Messiah, because you're not in a spirit body. You're still in your flesh body. And when Satan's here, you're going to be in your flesh body. Don't listen. Be, how many times does Jesus Christ say, be not deceived. Many will come in my name. Many, in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, been born again. Many out there, right? I counted just one section, right, of my TV. Because a lot of times Dennis Murray will say, you know, you see all the goofballs Sunday morning, right? I see all the goofballs 24-7 on 15 different stations. I've got direct TV. 24-7, these meatballs are just blah, 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 begging for money, talking about the rapture, all that. And they've hooked a lot of people. A lot of people go, do you have any churches that you're affiliated with? No. Mm -hmm. We are non-denomination alone. Shepherd's Chapel. Non-denomination alone. Why? Because people have a tendency to get off preaching goofy stuff, saying, yeah, I'm from Shepherd's Chapel. Yeah, I'm from Church of Making Your Day. No. You're from you. You're from where you have your name, you have your church. Don't involve me, don't involve her, don't involve them, right? Non denominational, a single. You want to listen? Listen. You got eyes to see, you got ears to hear. We're talking spiritual. Do it by all means. And then remember, the harvest is great. About 8 billion people here is the harvest, and the laborers are few. 
I've never seen anyone but us and Dennis Murray and Arnold Murray preach chapter by chapter, verse by verse, the big picture. I see all of them grabbing verses everywhere. Everywhere, here, over here, hodgepodge, you know, um, buffet style. It's not buffet style. Mm -hmm. It's not hodgepodge. This is your life. This is reality. And you've got to get it. And it's in the Word of God. Real simple. Once you know how to study. Once you take these books, right? Strong's Concordance, Smith's Bible Dictionary, a regular dictionary, uh, Webster's Collegiate, and uh, by far, a companion Bible. You want to do deep study? A companion Bible. Has 198 different appendixes on everything. The universe, the astronomy, the everything. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You, you don't just read the Bible. I've heard of people reading the Bible. I don't get it. Everybody knows the Ten Commandments, be a good boy and all that. That's not all there is to it. That's, that's, um, that's the tip of the iceberg. You've got to study to show yourself approved. Right? Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's go on. It's the same thing that, um, like nowadays, um, you see somebody give an interview to someone, right? And there's entire interviews. But what you can do nowadays from this interview, you can take a clip, right? And you just say, okay, this person has really said this. No, this person didn't say that. That was just part of the conversation, right. part of the sentence, part of that what that person tried to bring to your attention. So the same basically what Satan does. Right. He grabs the verse of the Bible, he tweaks a little bit, and he said, well, that's what really that verse said. And if you remember, he even brought this to Christ. Right. He told them that it is written, the Satan himself, brought verses from Bible, but he did not bring them precisely. What we're doing right now, we stand, study precisely Bible, verse by verse, chapter by chapter. But he tweaked the verse on a way that would be good for him, that he would be look good and God would be look bad through the verse that he is presenting. So in our days, a lot of, let's say, politicians, right, they're trying to get where they want to be, and they look at the opponents and they grab the part of the sentence that that person said and they said, well, that person said this and that's what this person going to do. That wasn't the whole conversation. Right. That wasn't the whole sentence. That wasn't, wasn't the point that that uh, person tried to bring. Why are you tweaking it? Why are you twisting it? Why are you changing it? Why? Because Be you're evil. Because, exactly, because the core of these people trying to bring is evil. Because that's exactly what Satan does. Yep. And it's exactly what Satan does. And it's exactly how Satan deceived people. Because they do not study the Word of God, word by word, chapter by chapter. So be very careful with that. And back to our description. We're not just going to say that Judah was there. We're going to read verse by verse, chapter by chapter, that it's what the same came to you, that the prime minister of Israel, this is what he said. That was his written 3,000 years ago from the word of God and his request of the borders of, for the children of Israel. In particular, we're going to read chapter where um, tribe of Judah involved. Because as you remember, all the rest of the um, tribes were scattered all over the world. And the only basically tribe of Judah stayed in that location. And then Jews came back, right? They came back and now it's a mixture of all kinds of tribes right. as the children of Israel. But the prior was just the tribe of Judah left. So we want to kind of grab this one. Uh, and of course, in addition, because the Gaza is present in this chapter and Jerusalem as well. So let's start. Um, this is Joshua, um, chapter 15, verse 1. This then was the lot of the tribe of the children of Judah. What's a lot? Ever seen a, um, like a, um, what's it called? A bunch of lots. You're doing a bunch of lots. Mm -hmm. I just had it in my head. I lost it. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, um, contractor is going to build 100 homes. What are there going to be? A hundred lots. Mm -hmm. This is where we get lot. 
a section of land. The only difference Plot. is your Plot. lot's a... Plot. Yeah, lots. Your, your lot's going to be maybe a fifth of an acre to a quarter of an acre. Their lots are hundreds of thousands of acres, right? M many, many miles, square miles, right? Okay, this then was the lot of the tribe of the children of Judah by their families, even to the border of Edom, Rush, the Russians, back then, before they went to Russia. The wilderness of Zin, southward, was the uttermost parts of the south coast, and their south border from the shore of the Salt Sea, the Dead Sea, Sodom and Gomorrah, from the bay that looked southward. And by the way, before Sodom and Gomorrah, I'm sure that Salt Sea was gorgeous because Sodom and Gomorrah were very wealthy, wealthy cities. And it went out to the south side of Malak, boy, Malheakabrabim, and passed along to Zin, and ascended up on the south side unto Kadesh Barnea, and passed along to Hezon, and went up to Adar, and fetched a compass to Karaka. From thence it passed toward Asmon, and went out unto the river of Egypt. I would assume that would be the Nile. And the goings out of that coast were at the sea. Uh, Mediterranean Sea probably, right? This shall be your south coast. So we're going from Dead Sea to Mediterranean Sea. So that's basically where tribal people are right. located. Mm -hmm. Right. And the east border was the Salt Sea, even unto the end of Jordan. And their border in that north quarter was from the bay of the sea at the utmost part of Jordan. And the border went up to Beth Hogla and passed along by the north of Beth Araba. And the border went up to the stone of Bohan and the son of Reuben. Reuben, remember, um, the firstborn and of Israel. And the border went up toward Debir from the valley of Achor and, and so northward looking towards Gilgal, that is before the going up of Adumen, Adumenum, which is on the south side of the river. And the border passed toward the waters of Enchemish and the goings out thereof of Entregal. All right, clear as mud. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom unto the south side of the Jebusite. The same is Jerusalem, and the border went up to the top of the mountain that lieth before the valley of Hinnom, westward, which is at the end of the valley of the giants, northward, the Nephilim. And those are the ones that came, you know, this might be a second influx, but you know, like the giants that God killed with Noah's flood. And the border was drawn from the top of the hill unto the fountain of water of Nephtoah and went out to the cities of Mount Ephraim and the border was drawn to Bela, which is Kirishim, Kiritha Jerum. And the border compassed from Behala West, um, let's see, B B A A L. There he is again, uh, Baal. Wonder who they worshipped. Westward unto Mount Seir, and passed along unto the side of Mount Jerum, which is the Cheslon, on the north side, and went down to Beth Shemesh, and passed on to Timnah. And the border went out unto the side of. Ekron, northward, and the border was drawn to Sikron, and passed along to Mount Bela, Bela, and went out unto Jabneel, and the goings out of the border were at the sea, and the west border was 
to the great sea. That's why Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. And the coast thereof, this is the coast of the children of Judah, round about according to their families. I'm just going to stop here for a second. So the coast, we're going to just read this a little bit later. That's going to be where the Gaza Strip is. That's exactly where that is. And it's exact location. And the Gaza itself going to be mentioned in a minute. So now it's it's a little bit uh, not easy for us, should I say, to read all these names. Obviously, they are Middle East name, right? We do not know these names. But uh, the most interesting things, for example, for, for me to learn that there's so many names um, exactly the same as they were named 3,000 years ago. I mean, the ones that we talk about the most, of course, it's Gaza and Jerusalem, but the rest of the names, what we're reading right now, they also exist. And if you're going to look at the na um, map of current Israel um, map, of right. recent map, that you will see this particular cities that are stated or rivers that stated, the hills, uh, the locations. So in other way, uh, everything that mentioned here and the names mentioned here is so, so precise that today, if you're going to go there, you will have no question where the borders truly are and you're not going to have a second thought about it. And 13. It's like we read about the uh, Philistines a lot, right? with uh, Israel, and who are the Philistines today? Palestinians, right? Right. And the west border was to the Great Sea. 13. Huh? 13. Oh, 13? Mm -hmm. Okay. And unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he gave a part among the children of Judah, according to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua, even the city of Arba, the father of Anak, which city is Hebron. So he gave, um, uh, Joseph gave Caleb um, the city of Hebron, which is a special city, right? Now, who was Caleb? Caleb was one of the 12, of the 12 tribes. Joshua and Caleb came back with a report about the promised land, right? What'd they say? God's with us, let's go for it. What'd the other 10 say? Forget it. These people are giants. They're going to crush us. We're grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. Therefore, 10, one against two. Mm -hmm. So God took them out to the wilderness for 40 years, and every one of those people was dead at the end of the 40 years, except who? Joshua and Caleb. Why? They believed. How strong were they? As strong as when they were young. They lost not their strength at all. Mm -hmm. Why? They feared God and they believed him. Okay. Just to clarify, there's nobody killed the rest of ten, right? Those representative for every single tribe. Right. They just literally physically die out. So they died in the wilderness and they never had a chance like Joshua and uh, Caleb to see the right. land, land of they, they the promised died, land. They died because of their cowardice. They were looking with their physical eyes. Joshua and Caleb were looking with their spiritual eyes, right? Very true. That's it. Mm -hmm. And Caleb drove thence the three sons of Anak, Shirei and Ahaman and Talmiah, the children of Anak. And he went up thence to the inhabitants of Debir. And the name of Debir before was Kir Jath Sefer. And Caleb said, He that smiteth Kir the Kir Jaff Sefer and take of it to him will I give Akisha, my daughter, to wife. And I'm sure she was a very beautiful woman, so somebody's gonna go, gonna go jump on that. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it. And he gave him Akisha, his daughter, to wife. I'm just going to stop here for a second, just to clarify, right? So it's not just, I mean, um, I'm sure she was beautiful and, and young, etc. But here, as we talk about honor to become a member of the family of, of Caleb, the one that was chosen by God, right? right. So I'm sure that... Um, that had something to do with it, too. 
<laughs> That's number one reason, okay? Okay. And I'm sure she was hot, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to make a point here. Go for it, baby. All right. Uh, it, it, it's, it's interesting that um, as, you, as you realize that the whole, basically, um, the whole story of children of Israel coming out from Egypt was not only the story among children of Israel, but it was a story in the Middle East altogether with all those tribes. And if you remember, they all were in great fear that children of Israel are going to be in that location. So now, when children of Israel, even though uh, it's hard to understand why they saw with their own eyes and yet they choose act differently. Well, that's, I guess, uh, our nature as a humans. We not fear God enough. Uh, but there's a deep respect was towards Caleb and Joshua as children of Israel and other people that lived in those areas, other tribes. They witness that the, the, the rest of the ten tribes die out, right? right. The representative of those ten, ten tribes die out. Mm -hmm. But Caleb and Joshua, not just being okay, right. not just stay alive, right. but, but the, very blessed. But very blessed was their strength and their power did not go anywhere because God wants them to enter that promised land. Right. So that tells us that. If God has planned for you, He will give you strength. He gi will give you health. He will give you wisdom to go to where you plan to go with Him, uh, guiding you to be there. It's very important point for us to remember what true meaning of this um, of Caleb and Joshua, and how we should understand that when we choose God, when we have His back. When we have his guidance, he will make sure that you will handle it, that you're going to be okay, and you will be able to achieve what he has in your heart uh, and what he give you in your heart to achieve towards the end. Right? Right. Okay. And, and you know, to bring it kind of to um, fruition nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, well, that was then, but what about now? Where's God now? God's in the United States of America. He's with the United States of America. One nation under God, this God, with liberty and justice for all. Well, uh, what about World War I? We won. Well, what about World War II? Came close, right? With Hitler and the Japanese, we were sweating bullets. But who won? The United States of America. What about Korea and Vietnam? Oh, yeah, we lost there. We lost there? There wasn't one person on our soil here that got hurt at all. We went over to their country and we wiped them out and we destroyed the back communism. Remember the good old USSR? Well, North Korea and Vietnam took care of that. Tear down this wall. And they did. Right? So don't, don't be thinking we're losers. We're winners. Why? We've got God. Arnold Murray had a Marine squadron of 12,000 people and went through about 200,000 uh, Chinese and North Koreans. Right? They won. Why? God was with them. All right, where are we? That's very true. But I also also want to humble the United States a little bit. Well, right now we're being very was, humbled because we're not with God. Because it was World War One and it was World War Two. So you're in along with with we won. Right. Right. You right. were with God. We were with God, and we were with the Allied forces, exactly. England and France. Thank you. France sometimes. So, <laughs> right. A little bit. Well, let's talk about you know, uh, let's talk about Russia that lost twenty million people in, 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 uh, in the war, and let's talk about Russia that entered Berlin and found Hitler shooting himself in his bunker. Let's talk about Russia who first put flag on top of the race tag in uh, in Germany. So it wasn't United States exactly by himself, but by themselves. Right. Because sometimes United States, no offense, is just a little bit too. Uh, to uh, you know, proud about themselves. Right. But uh, of course, the Don brought uh, fact that uh, you have to be with God to win. That's a hundred percent. And but you also need to be humble and remember that it's not just your um, 
and your gain, right? right. And, and if you're not humbled, guess what? You get hurricane after hurricane after earthquake after earthquake after tornado after tornado. Think somebody's trying to tell us something. No, the United States isn't the shining star that it used to be at all. With woke and abortion and insanity and millions flooding the border. No, it's obvious, right? We're doing something way wrong. God will correct us. That's what it's all about. How many times have we read even so far? Israel was with God. Awesome, they're blessed. Israel went off to other gods. They're cursed. And eventually they were taken over. And eventually they were scattered throughout the world. God scattered them. Well, you know, you know how many people have no idea that the United States and Britain and, for, and the uh, English-speaking Christian nations, how many of those nations over there have what? A cross on their flags, right? Gee, I wonder why. Because they're Christian nations. They may not be very Christian now. They may not be acting very Christian, but they are Christian nations, period. And God will wake them up. That's a guarantee. And 18. And it came to pass as she came unto him that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she lighted off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What wouldest thou? Now here comes, you know, baby girl. I'm sure she's going to get anything she wants, right? Mm -hmm. Who answered, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me a south land. Give me also springs of water. And he gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. Anything for you. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families. And the utmost cities of the tribe of the children of Judah toward the coast of Edom, southward, were Cabazel and Eder and Jagger. Oh boy, here we go. Hold on. And Kingna and Demona and Adama and Kadesh and Hazor and Ithnan, Ziph and Telman, Beloth and Hazor and Hadathath and Kirion and Hezron, which is Hazor, a man, oh, Amen, Amen, and Shema, and Mola, and Hazagada, and Heshma, and Bethla, and Hazar Shual, and Beersheba, and Bistoba, Bala, Emma, and Azum, and El Tolad, and Shizel, and Horma, and Ziklag, that one I understand, <laughs> and Madana, and Sansana, and Leboth, and Shelah, and Ann, and Rimna. All the cities are 20 and 9 with their villages. So there's 29, there's 29 villages, like little cities alone. And the valley, Eshtol, and Zorah, and Ashna, and Zana, and Enganim, Tapatha, and Enam, Jerva, and Abdullam, Soka, and Azekai, and <laughs> the list goes on. Lucky Jews, lucky Israelites, and Zana, and Enagram, Tapa, and Elam. Jawa and Abram, Soka and Ezekah, and Shira and Adam and Jitara <laughs> and, and Chitarathim, fourteen cities right there with their villages. Zainan, Ashnan, and Migat Migal, no, Migdal God and Dilan and uh, Dylan and Mizva and Joka. Lakish, that one I understand too, and Boskoth and Eglon, I think the Eglon was giants, and Kevon and Lama and Kithish, Kithlish, and Jeez, 
Let's see. And Jira, Bethagon, and Elamah, and Mekadah, 16 cities with their villages. Libna, Hethra, and Ashan, Zipha, and Ashna, and Nezib, and Kaelan, <laughs> Akzib, and Marishan, nine cities with their villages. Ekron with her towns and villages, from Ekron even unto the sea, I think what well, probably the Dead Sea, huh? all that lay near or the Mediterranean, Ashdod with their villages, Ashdod with her towns and her villages, Gaza, hey, there it is, Gaza with her towns and her villages, under the river of Egypt, the Nile, and the great sea, the border thereof. And here it is, here's your river and here's your sea. Mm-hmm. Unto the river of Egypt and the great sea, the land of the Gaza, that is written here, was given to children of Israel together with the villages. Let's read them all through. Okay, mm-hmm. we're on 48, right? Mm-hmm. And in the mountains, Shimmer and Jatir and Sukkah and Dana and Kirath Shana which is Debir, and Adma, and Esther, and Amma, um, um, and Amon, and Goshen, Goshen, heard of that one, and Holon, and Gila, 11 cities with their villages, Erath, and Duma, and Eshtham, and Jana, and Bethab, and Aphenkai, and Hamath, and Kirja Arba, which is Hebron, and Zior, nine cities, the villages, Mena, Carmel, and Zipha, and Judah, and Jezreel, and Jokum, Jokum, and Zana, Cain, Giba, and probably something to do with Cain, and Tima, ten cities, with their villages, Hal, Bethzor, and Gidor, and Marath, and Bethna, and el cities, six cities with their villages. Kirithon, the Baal, there's another Baal, which is kirjath Jerim and Rava, two cities with their villages. In the wilderness, Beth, Betherba, Midian, and Seca. Ka, Sekaka, and Nibshan, and the city of salt, and the Enga, it must have been something left there a little bit after uh, mm-hmm. Sodom and Gomorrah, six cities with their villages, as for the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the children of Judah could not drive them out, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Judah, at the at Jerusalem under this day, they probably should have tried a little harder to drive them out. Yeah, and that was we know it was a mistake because um, uh, original Lord did say that you have to drive out uh, all the inhabitants, and you should not left none of them. Right? However, Joshua made mistake. They tricked him, and he just went um, without consulting God, and we all know right. that until today, they pay in that price. So right. Thorns uh, in their side. So by reading this chapter, we realize there is a, is a huge land. Look what we have. We have 29 cities and their villages, right. 14 cities and their villages, 16 cities and their villages, 11 cities and their villages, 9 cities and their villages. 10 cities and their villages, 6 cities and their villages, and last one, 2 cities and their villages. So you have to understand what an enormous uh, piece of land was It's a lot of cities and villages. Given to children of Israel, tribe Judah only. Remember, we're going over tribe Judah only. So we want to read this precisely for you to, first of all, uh, if you're familiar with Middle East, you will see the names that uh, exist until now that you can precisely see 
um, where waters of Judah uh, laid Israel. by God at the beginning. The tribe of Judah. This is just the tribe of Judah. Oh, Judah. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, and also, uh, obviously, the land that the, the, the fighting about right now, the land of Gaza. Uh, Gaza and Jerusalem that mentioned, both are mentioned here. Yeah, that's just Judah, huh? This is just Judah. That's oh. the reason why we read this particular chapter all together. Uh, now, as we continue uh, moving forward, we will mention today chapter 16. We will not read chapter 16, where a description going towards um, Manasseh and Ephraim, the children of Joseph. And we'll continue to talk about Manasseh a little bit more. On chapter 17 but that's pretty much it so we want to give you a legal description uh, you know where Judah is uh, tribe Judah uh, located between uh, Dead Sea and Mediterranean Sea but we want to give you a precise location in cities that were included only to tribe of Judah one of um, uh, I, I wouldn't want to say 11 uh, 12 tribes because Levi's never received basically their land Right. but um, the tri 11 tribes of children of Israel. Well, we, we hope that you found this, uh, this chapter very informative and uh, this current situation in the Middle East, uh, East uh, will get a little bit more clear to you for you to understand that 3,000 years ago the word was written by God. You also will understand that the fear that experience um, the countries that surround Israel because it came from this deep presence of God in his acknowledgement. And they know that. Even though they um, follow the Quran, even though they, they follow words that written uh, 600 years later after even New Testament was written, that's what they follow. But just like fear was present here, they know who plays location, who plays borders, and who plays... Um, land in hands of children of Israel. They know, and that's the question for you, the answer for you, why they're not fighting back and why they're not um, trying to, even though they want to, you can only imagine how much they want to get rid of from uh, children of Israel. But that fear, that stay in their mind with all precise locations and cities and everything that stay the same and right. still have the same names. Right. So all they need to do is open chapter 15 of Joshua. <laughs> hey, and good luck. And, You're going to need it. And confirm. That's, um, that's some homework who, right there. Who this land is truly belongs to. So we hope it was a little bit informative for and you. And you said the Quran. Is the Quran a Muslim? Yeah, Islamic. Oh, okay. Yeah, this okay. is the book what they go going by. Okay. We, okay. We'll go by Bible, they go by Quran. Right. Um, okay. But again, it was written 600 years after, after New yeah. Testament was mm -hmm. written. Right. So again, we want to thank you so very much and really hope that this information is going to bring a little bit more clarity for you and understanding and respect of the God, uh, God word and His purpose for children of Israel of the possession of this land. And we thank you so very much and we'll see you next time on chapter 17. Thank you. All right. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, again, you got your homework to do here, right? Looking those up. All right, we'll see you next time for 16. We love you. Bye.